It's a party on football Friday night. I love it and we are ready. The energy out there was great. Our game of the week, a matchup of epic proportions taking place for the first time ever. The battle for bragging rights, the battle for Waukee. Fans lined up before four o'clock this afternoon and when the gates opened at five, it was a mad rush to get the best seats at the den. Did they see a good one? Well, here's Casey's guys, Jeff Dubroff. Jeff, can't Yeah, Scott, good evening to you. Like you said, first time these two teams have ever faced in a football game. Game was so good, I wish they had started playing two years ago. Waukee, Waukee Northwest, let's get to these highlights. A battle we've been waiting for for a long time. Unbelievable crowd on hand for this one. It was a sellout crowd, over 7,000. Like I said, student sections were fired up. We even had a dog on hand. That's a cute pop. Waukee. Striking first, it took it to the second quarter. Grant Gamble three yards out. Waukee takes a 7-0 lead. They would go on to extend that later on in the second quarter. This is a beautiful play. Beckett Baker rolling to his right, throwing across his body, and he finds Gabriel Chey, and there he goes. Big box bound, 81 yards all the way to the house and it looked like Waukee was going to run away with this one but the Wolves would respond before half Sam Johnson a dime to Will Retz makes it 14-7 Waukee would score on a field goal before the end of the half to make it 17-7 and that would be the score until the fourth quarter no one scores in the third quarter let's get to the fourth quarter now in this game Waukee Northwest knocking on the door They'll hand it off to Ryan Woodruff, pounding it in. Wolves PAT was blocked, so it's 17-13. Crowd, though, is coming alive. This place was a madhouse. It was a zoo, it was electric, and the place exploded here. Sam Johnson in the red zone, and a dime. The pass of the year so far to Maverick Inman. Waukee Northwest scores 13 unanswered points in the fourth to take the lead. All they need is a stop, and they're going to complete the comeback and it's Harry Linen on the pick. The senior told me after the game it was a game they had been circled on their calendar since last year, and it lived up to the hype and then some. Waukee Northwest takes it. Final score, 20 to 17. All right, game of the week trophy, baby. Let's go, baby! Hey, right, let's go! Go Wolves, baby! Yeah, there you see it, Harry Linen, the senior, the emotion on his face. What a win. Like I said, this team trailed 17-7 heading into the final frame. They score 13 unanswered points to storm back and win it. And on all nights, a full moon, the Wolves are howling. Reporting from the Den, Jeff Dubroff, KCCI, Iowa Sports Leader. Oh, I love it. That is fitting, and what a game. Now, we also had another battle of a city, the battle for West Des Moines. Oh, yeah, how about Valley versus Dowling? Always a thrill ride. Dowling, number one in the state. 7 nothing. Dowling here. Quarterback Dante Cadaldo rolls out and looking for his man, but it's picked off. What a catch. Isaiah Pink snags it. That ends the third quarter. We're starting the fourth. It's still a slugfest. The lights are out. Valley down 7 0. They're down to their third string quarterback, Ethan Stimler, who has a huge completion to Noah Craycraft to get Valley into the red zone. Stimler trying to be the hero, has a chance. Let's this one rip, but right to Jacob Kruger. Kruger with a nice return sets him up, and Rashad Davis cashes it in. 14 0. That would ice it. Dowling wins the battle for West Des Moines by that score, 14 0. Ankeny coming off that epic double overtime win last week against Centennial. Tonight they hosted two time defending state champ Southeast Polk. Scoreless in the first. Ankeny goes for it on fourth and 11. Luke Anderson and the big guy, Devin Akers, who had the game winner last week, a 34 yard touchdown, and the Hawks are up 7 0. Southeast Polk calmly score the next four touchdowns in a row. Connor Moberly to Sam Zelinovich. Sam, see Sam run. 35-yard touchdown, makes it 28-7, and the Rams roll 58-21. Johnston hopping on the bus to Cedar Falls, taking on Cedar Falls at the Unidome. Second quarter, Dragons down 28-21. Will Nuss to Dalen Houston. Smooth runner, maybe they can score here and tie it up. First down, but then again, maybe not. Nolan. Plaguey, Cedar Falls, a beautiful pick. 
Nuss would then get picked off again, and Johnston falls 35 to 31. Metro Battle Bruin. East side versus south side of Lincoln High. Both these teams 0 and 1. East High's Quaid and Clearwater making more moves in a game of just dance. Check it out, but the rail splitters wrap them up eventually. Lincoln would get the ball back. And all aboard the Sanders Express. Javon Sanders punches his ticket into the end zone. We're going to hear his name a lot this year. And Lincoln gets a nice win, 26 to 8. All right, time for a break. But when we come back, we get wild. Your wild card game up next. Welcome back, everyone. There's a lot of beach action out there. All the games I was at, popular thing. Had some togas. Yeah, I mean, I saw a little bit of beach action. I saw some other kids. They were wearing this jailbreak uniforms. <laughs> you know, I actually matched them. I had an orange skirt on earlier, so I thought it was a little bit funny. You know, fit right in. Let's call it a jailbreak. But let's talk about the game. One of these teams was on a jailbreak. St. Edmunds and Collins Maxwell. Got to have that tearaway banner, right? St. Ed scored on the fourth play of the game. Cooper Wearson here for Collins Maxwell drops back in the pocket, airs it out, but it's picked off by Jacob Koopman, who scored the first tutty of the game. He himself had a day. Monkey see, monkey do, because two plays later, Joseph Dvorak right across the face of Clay Baker. Second quarter, Wearson needed to get something done, as good a route runner as he is a passer, truly. Put on the wheels, hugs the sideline to get in the end zone. The Spartans are on the board. It's 13-6, St. Ed's. This is the play of the game right here. My jaw dropped when it happened. JT Lawfersweeler fakes the pitch and hits Kinnick Henning in stride. How about that acceleration through the hole? Clock that miles per hour time right there. St. Edmund wouldn't look back. The Gales obliterate. Collins Maxwell 61 14. Wow, nice night out there. Norwalk up 7 0 in the first at home against Indianola. And you know, it was Andrew DeWall 
Has his clock cleaned by Norwalk's Will the Thrill Ooh. Clark. Scary play right there. Violent game. Norwalk ball now. Aiden Harder to Eli Robbins. Robbins runs right under eighth. These two had a nice connection all night long, and Norwalk holds on to win 21 to 14. Shannon? Little stutters up there. How about this? You're looking at the Ballard flight crew, the Bombers. You we just it. saw those guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. Humble in town. Cohen Matson with time to move around the pocket of Patrick Mahomes. Midair throw is good to Corey Detman. Nails the pylon. Ties at 7 7. The following Ballard drive, Mason Gatchel frantically looking for somebody, anybody, but it's Cale Donahue with the strip sack in the end zone. Brody Hendricks falls on top of it. That makes it 14 7. Humboldt sets off a bombshell at Ballard to beat him 14-13. Nice game. ADM, you know, we got a little Brevendahl action for you. They're leading Winterset 21-7 here. Nice night out there. Winterset punt. How about a little special teams okay. action? We got to show the special teams, guys. This is Luke Lynn. Nice punt down by Michael Sense. That's just how you do it, right? But the defense cannot contain Iowa commit Brevendahl. Very few people can. Brevendahl to the dollhouse. 28-7 after that impressive touchdown. Hank Wilms has a nice run to lead to a short touchdown here for Winterset, but it wasn't nearly enough. ADM blows him out 49-27. That kid's insane. Preston at Lewis Central, the best in the game. You know the name, rip it apart. Let's see how they do. The visiting Panthers strike first. Watch the ball handling skills of Cale Turner. Pulls it in just in time. Five-yard tutty. Creston up 6-0. Special teams giving LC a spark. Curtis White gets the edge in good bye. 52 yards to the house, but it's not enough. Creston wins at LC 22-20. Hey, we showed you earlier Van Meter hosting Des Moines Christian. Van Meter kicker Katie Lindsay on the Bulldogs and Gianna Bennett kicking for Des Moines Christian. Also keep, uh, fundraising for Count the Kicks, both of them. Great job, ladies out there. Van Meter's Austin bomb over is going to air it out and watch Kale Trudeau. Just backyard <laughs> football, right? Makes it seven nothing. Van Meter had 21 points in the first quarter. Watch this play on defense. Dewan Christians, Tate Platt throws one deep. Six foot four senior Rhett Flegenkuhl <laughs> bobbles it and then just turns back the other way. Nearly scores. They win 56 to 17. Eight man action at Murray Bedford in town. Murray Case Patton here on the return. Watch him go. Turns on the Jets. Nearly scores. He won't, but that's okay. That's why we have Nolan Gannon. He ends up tying the game at seven. Bedford's Garrison Motzinger. Here's your boy Nolan right here. Here's my boy Nolan. What am I talking about? He's moving to. You gotta, gotta keep up with me here. Bedford's Garrison Motzinger. Let's go back to him. Up 14-7. That'll do it. Bedford explodes from there. 71-20 is the final score. And we'll have Fan of the Week up next.
Welcome back. Time for fans of the night. Yeah, the Van Meter kids go in LeBron with togas on the kickoff. <laughs> what, a time. what a time. 